Hello, I'm Father Rich Tui, the pastor of Our Lady of Peace Parish in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I wanna welcome all of our parishioners and any others who might be joining us um, for this walk through the windows of Our Lady of Peace. This kind of goes back to my three years being here as pastor, and I've always thought and said even that I wanted to take a systematic way of learning about the windows together and just haven't made that happen. So we thought this time, this downtime uh, during this crisis, that it could be a great chance to, to learn about the windows and let them teach us, but also inspire us. So that's what we'll be doing during the days of April. The plan is uh, we have 28 windows here at Our Lady of Peace, and then we're gonna do an intro video and a, a concluding video. This is the introduction video that'll take us through those 30 days of April. The clergy here at Our Lady of Peace will be uh, walking us through and leading the daily kind of teachings and reflections. So myself and Father Mark Hoffman, as well as deacons Joe, Glenn, and John. And so we're grateful to them. Um, I do wanna mention there was a book written about the windows and it has a, a prologue that kind of introduces the idea that they had in bringing the windows when they built Our Lady of Peace back in 1977. And so I'll read that for you now. Basic intent in the development of the design and subject matter of these 28 windows is for the honor and glory of the triune God and our Blessed Mother. The windows describe an interrelationship of the Old and New Testaments, teaching the same teachings, indicating the timelessness of the Lord. It also shows the continuity of and support of the Old Testament by the New Testament. The idea correlates to the parish community, the elderly and the youth. The windows should stimulate new ideas in young people and reaffirm the ideas of the older people. The person's ideals and teachings as symbolized here should be a viable force in directing people of all ages toward heaven. And that's really the goal of all sacred art is to turn our gaze towards the divine, turn our gaze up towards the, um, the lofty ideals and purpose for which we've been created, eternal life with our God and that which is divine. And so um, we'll allow our walk through the windows to do that. An overall summary of the windows, nine of them, are scripturally based. Um, Old Testament over here on the east side of the church in the main sanctuary, the New Testament over on the other side. Um, five of them are symbolic of the triune God, our, our, our God, um, the different persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as well. Five are dedicated to our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Peace, our patroness here at our church. And four of them, the beautiful windows, of course, in the chapel that we'll get to see later in our walk. Um, there are three that are dedicated to the sacraments and also six dedicated to the saints in the back of the church and will allow them and their stories to inspire us as we learn more about them as well. Um, overall, stained glass windows, um, we remember that a great lesson they teach us is that they really are nothing, uh, almost imperceptible when there's no light behind them. Uh, we can't really tell what they are, what they symbolize, the color. And then when that light, the sunlight gets behind them, they, they come out in full life and vibrancy and beauty. And you can see what the, the message they are giving. And so the, the, the format for each window that we'll walk through will have a basic description and then a moral or a lesson or some way to let the window inspire us or something to think about. And then I'm gonna like to try to incorporate having a song for each window that can give us a source to meditate and reflect on how this window can also inspire us. I also, my goal in that is to expose our community to more and more Christian music. There's excellent, inspiring Christian music out there that I'd love to get us exposed to. So the song I think of when it comes to this introduction, and it might not surprise you, it's a song called Stained Glass Window by Clay Cross from the late 90s. And it really reminds us of a theme that's picked up in the Curcio uh, retreat movement that we have in our diocese. Um, the, the theme song for Curcio, and that's a, it's a Spanish uh, retreat that originated in Spain. So the, a lot of the terms are Spanish, but it's called De Colores, and it means of the colors. And this idea with Curcio and on our own faith and here at Our Lady of Peace and what Christ calls us to is that when we live a life in Christ, when he is the light that shines through us and we live in that fullness of beauty and color that he calls us to, that that's the full Christian life that God desires for us. And it can only happen when that light of Christ shines through us and we see the fullness of our life and our beauty. 
So the challenge we have, and I mentioned this on Sunday in our homily this past week here at Our Lady of Peace, is I talked about walking around like zombies sometimes spiritually. That could be a challenge when the day-to-day -day life kind of bogs us down. And so the image here would be living a color and a life in black and white. And that we shouldn't be content with that. But to, to allow this Lent and even this time of slowdown and, and, and pandemic to be a chance to go, let God renew us, to live fully in the colors of Jesus Christ, that full beauty that he wants us to live like the stained glass windows inspire us to do. So let's think about that. And we look forward to our walk through the windows of Our Lady of Peace in the days of April ahead. Thank you.